Hello everyone, and welcome to my Sister Wives For You channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. While assisting his ex-wife Mary Brown with her move to Utah on the November 24th episode of Sister Wives, Cody Brown broke down in tears. Cody Brown is starting to feel pain from the knife in his kidneys. Mary Brown was taken aback when her ex-husband Cody sobbed during the Sister Wives episode that aired on November 24th after relocating her from Arizona to her Utah home. Cody reached out to embrace his ex and said, Mary, it's the end of an era. I won't let it bring me down. Even though it was a fantastic run, his ex-wife was surprised by the response. Mary told her husband, Cody, whom she married in 1990, it always blows me away that you get emotional like this. I don't get it. Cody revealed that after Christine Brown, Janelle Brown, and Mary left him, he went through the anger phase of the multi-divorce process and is now grieving. In some ways, it's just heartbreaking, Cody, who is now only married to Robin Brown stated. And although I enjoy my life, it has changed significantly over the past three years. Everyone else seemed to say, this isn't important. Cody continued, I'm grieving a loss referring to Mary's action as the last nail in the coffin of our dream. Mary, though, isn't having it. After years of being apart from her ex and attempting to mend their relationship, she vented her anger at Cody's responses in her confessional. Mary remarked he's crying. He's stating that an era is coming to an end, but I'm thinking that things didn't have to be this way. During the show, Cody made another startling admission. I'm sorry about the seven years, but I'm glad we did it. He apologized to Mary for their protracted separation, because instead of being angry, I can now grieve a loss. But Mary is even more perplexed as a result of Cody's remarks. I don't get it. In her confessional, she stated, I don't understand. Where this is coming from is unknown to me. I don't comprehend it. I don't comprehend it. Why is he feeling this way when he has made it plain that he does not want me in his life? And the uncertainty and bewilderment appear to be ongoing as Mary wonders, OSD, what have I done? In the promo for next week's episode, I might have made a mistake. Mary and Cody merrily packed up and made fun of each other earlier in the episode. So even with all the drama, Mary did receive one win for the day. Cody described Mary as the favorite divorce wife. Mary, you're the most popular ex-wife. That's as simple as it gets. Mary even made fun of the label, joking, I can finally be the favorite. As he assisted her with her relocation, Cody couldn't help but swoon over his ex. Mary is spot on today. In one confessional, he asserted, she's just the wonderful woman that I would have liked to have been married to. In another, he added, Mary changed after we got married. And it was a difficult relationship until today. It's ironic, too. In her own confessional, Mary concurred and added, Today has been good. We seem to be seeing aspects of ourselves that we once cherished. I also have no regrets regarding our current situation. Shortly after their 1990 vows, Cody Brown declared he was prepared to separate from his first wife, Mary Brown. However, Mary said in the September 15th premiere that he led me to believe that he would work on things by saying, Oh Mary, when we move to Flagstaff, this will be a good time to have a new beginning for us alluding to their 2018 relocation. Like he led me to believe those things. This is what he's done for many, many years. Her primary complaint, she stated, is his lack of communication and how he really felt and what he really wanted or what he really didn't want in the story that he's been telling for all these years. Also, Cody admitted that there might have been mixed messages, but only because he added, I'm like, why would I do this? When he began to work on things. I would not court and date her now. In any case, when Mary finally pulled the plug in early 2023, her pals were ecstatic. They're like, okay, we're here for you, we're supporting you. And it's about damn time, she admitted. Because if he can push me out and I leave, he's not the bad guy because he didn't walk away, she says, implying that he had been trying to get her to leave him for years by claiming he didn't love her. In the season premiere, Cody said that he was prepared to let the idea die. Years after the family had bought the 14-acre plot of land in Flagstaff, Arizona, on which they intended to build, 
unable to construct without paying the entire $820,000 price tag, which the family allegedly did in 2023, he said to Robin Brown, his surviving wife, I'd almost rather scrap it or sell it, and then just start again somewhere else. I can't talk about that, she said in reference to Robin. That is so not where I'm at. Janelle Brown, the second wife, had previously informed E. News, we just kind of started to grow apart. But in the end, she left because of Cody's shortcomings as a parent to several of their children. The mom told Logan Brown, Madison Brown Brush, Hunter Brown, Garrison Brown, Gabriel Brown and Savannah Brown. The big spark for me was when his relationship broke down with my children, and he didn't seem like he would move heaven and earth to fix it. And I thought, okay, that was what was really holding me here. Janelle refused to entertain the possibility of reconciliation, even when Cody brought it up in the November 3rd episode. I don't know how I would ever reconcile with him and have him not have a relationship with my kids, she stated. No, I'm going to always choose my kids. That was Cody's justification for not trying harder to patch up the problems he was having with some of his grown children. I don't fit in the family anymore, he complained in the episode that aired on September 15th. Dayton Brown, Aurora Brown, Brianna Brown, Solomon Brown, and Ariella Brown are the five children he and Robin are raising together. He added, and then I have some relationship with some of the other kids, and it's infrequent. And so I'm like what do I do with all of this? It doesn't feel like a family. We're probably doing the worst we've ever done in our marriage, Robin admitted in the season 19 premiere, even though they were being totally monogamous for the first time in their 14-year marriage. It's been tough between us. He doesn't know who to blame, himself, or one of the other wives. Cody's feeling a lot of rejection, and so I think he's kind of looking at me going, are you going to reject me too? The worst thing she summarized was that there's no resource to help with the idea that I'm still married to a man who's going through divorces. As a result, she disclosed, I'm on my toes. I'm having to consistently make sure that he is not sabotaging our relationship. As Cody shared, I can't look myself in the mirror and say, hey dude, I love you. Cody was experiencing a crisis of confidence. Seeing her former sister wives enjoy their new era was difficult for Robin. They're all moving on, she said on the episode that aired on October 27th. I feel like the idiot that got left behind. To the list of children Cody isn't currently seeing, add Madison, Janelle's oldest daughter. During the premiere, Janelle clarified, I am aware that Maddie has not spoken to her father. He's not called, she's not called him, and she doesn't have any relationship with Robin. She's pretty much written them both off. Cody's shaky relationship with Maddie's children, Axel, Evangeline and Josephine, is the problem, according to Janelle. She doesn't really want him to have any contact unless he can commit to it. Because of this, Janelle revealed on the September 22nd episode that when the family started to really dissolve, Cody did sort of cut off communication with Maddie and her husband Caleb Brush, whose sister was married to Cody's brother. Maddie has been mama bear to the extreme, Janelle continued, since Cody has not been calling or coming to see. She has felt like until he can be consistent and show up and not be dramatic, that she feels like it's probably better if they don't know about him. Robin added that she has been pushing Cody to make amends, but she also stated, I think the kids should be doing the same thing, too. Cody, however, seems unprepared to mend the split for the time being, complaining that each time he spoke to his daughter, it was a fish for gossip and I got tired of it. He was alluding to the fact that he never loved me and he felt like he had to marry me. Mary revealed in a conversation with her friend Brandy during the September 15th premiere while they were celebrating their 32nd anniversary. Cody, I told him, I know you loved me. In a confessional, Leon Brown's mother asked why he ever proposed if he didn't. Why would a single young man choose to marry a single young woman and simply declare and compel love for her when he didn't feel any feelings for her? How cruel is that? She questioned. I chose you to attempt to force myself to love for the next 32 years, he said, picking me out of a crowd. In his own confessional, Cody responded, Oh, Mary has her little allegations now. All right, she is free to say whatever she wants. I will refrain from commenting on it. He would, however, admit that they never relished their honeymoon. 
During the October 20th show, he argued, this marriage was on the rocks the entire marriage. And how would I know that? Because my relationships with Robin, Christine, and Janelle were so much better. Even though he acknowledged that he should have gotten out of the relationship 25 years ago, he remained because he was afraid, saying, leadership will never allow you to marry again if you're discarding wives. I think I'm going to have to lawyer up. Janelle admitted to former sister wife Christine Brown in the September 22nd episode, because I think that's the only way I'm ever going to get any kind of decision out of him. Janelle stated that step one was paying off the Arizona property, even though she wasn't sure if she wanted to build on Coyote Pass or just sell it off. Without a valid marriage to Cody, Janelle admitted, I really have no legal rights to make any kind of claim on Cody's property. In her own words, it's not like I'm just calling a lawyer and saying I need to divorce this person. No, there isn't a legal marriage, which makes things quite difficult. Cody claims that he no longer trusted Janelle, which is why he didn't discuss their Arizona property with her. We will pay off the property when the time comes, he maintained during a confessional in the September 22nd episode, adding, and I'm not giving you any details about what I'm doing or whatever, because I'm tired of disclosing information that goes through the gossip mill of our broken family. In her own interview, Janelle described it as a bit of a pot calling the kettle black. He leaks like a sieve, she said. He told me stuff about his other relationships and his other wives that I was like, I don't think you're supposed to be telling me that. The family used to put all of their money into one pot back when their love was still growing rather than shrinking. On the September 22nd show, Janelle stated, up until the last 10 or so years, that's how it always worked. We would use all the resources to help one person. Then we would all rally to support the other person. Suddenly, it's about my estate. Even though everyone needs their own estate, they all helped to purchase Robin's $1.65 million five-bedroom house in Arizona when she needed a place to live. It was put up for sale this past August. According to Robin, the idea was that it would be a benefit to the family. However, when Janelle proposed that they all put their names on the mortgage, she was rejected. Cody was like, no, no, we need to protect, you know, protect Robin's estate, Janelle recalled. Therefore, now that she is leaving the family, she would like her share of the Coyote Pass proceeds, and I'd like to recoup some of the money I put into Robin's house. However, it can be difficult to sell. We were working together for so long, Robin said, and Robin continued. It's like, how do you calculate? after Janelle claimed she owed them money. How do you calculate that? It's really perplexing. I see all the art on their walls, Janelle said of Robin and Cody's house. But I've seen him grab other assets like trailers and home decor. Janelle griped about the family's failure to pay for Coyote Pass, saying that Cody claimed to have all these other debts. And that's okay. I have money and I've spent it on things too. Cody claimed that a large portion of his money was used to purchase cars basically had a fleet, and child insurance. I used to always be surprised at how nice her backyard was, Janelle said, adding that she wasn't sure how Cody and Robin managed their expenses. It was finished. Additionally, there was always stuff at her place. And I thought, wow, huh. Finally, she wore herself down by saying, he doesn't prioritize what I need or what I want. I think after a while, I began to see it, and my kids were getting very angry about it, like my adult children. Like mom, what the hell? In Robin's opinion, though, she was extremely frugal after her first marriage failed. During the September 22nd show, she revealed, I used to be not so great with money. When I was young, I had hard knocks. And then I learned during my divorce really how to budget myself very, very well. When asked about her fellow sister wives, she replied, you just must have had a different priority of where your money was going to go than I did. That's all. While she and Christine, the mother of Aspen Brown, Michael T. Brown Padrone, Paidon Brown, Gwendolyn Brown, Isabel Brown and Truly Brown, gather with their children, Janelle admitted in the September 22nd episode that there's no contact really with Mary or Robin or Cody. I don't really foresee that's going to change much. Everything was going along smoothly and Maddie and Caleb were around and it was great having them around. And I loved Caleb. He was definitely like family, Cody added, referring to their arrangement of four houses on a cul-de-sac 
during their time in Las Vegas, as the best time of my life. However, as they disagreed about procedures relating to the coronavirus, things started to fall apart in Arizona. He said that his ties with the children suffered as a result of his marriages failing, saying, it just made all those relationships go sour. However, Christine maintained that there were problems long before she made her departure, known in late 2021. She stated, all the kids that were frustrated were frustrated way before I left, during the show that aired last September 22nd. My leaving didn't change his kids' relationship with him. Cody can still fix his relationships with his children. However, it will undoubtedly require some effort. I'm so angry about how I've been treated that I haven't gotten past that, Cody said. Here's the thing is I'm not willing to take blame for things that my wife or ex-wife is sitting there telling them that I did. I hope the time comes when the contempt will subside will be able to find forgiveness and love again. Cody disclosed that when he and Mary were officially married at the age of 19 and spiritually married at the age of 21, respectively, they didn't really know one another. In order for Cody to lawfully adopt Robin's three oldest children from her first marriage, they ultimately filed for divorce in 2014. He said that everything was a conflict, saying, I can't live in a world where she is constantly angry at me. When we got married, she was very different, and I think just there's some baggage that Mary had that I didn't know about, Cody explained. At first, I felt like I could live with it. However, he was unable to leave. According to a man in a plural marriage, Cody stated, he cannot ask for a divorce if he wishes to remain true and in his beliefs. It is not permitted. I therefore couldn't leave that relationship. I didn't necessarily want to end the connection though. I wanted to know if it was something we could fix and save. Cody added, she wasn't nice, she wasn't fun, she wasn't kind, and she wasn't interesting. This is why he stated to Mary that he thought they would work things out. I'm bored and trying to be curious with her. But I didn't kick me out, he said, acknowledging that he could understand Mary's sense of abandonment. Mary, Janelle, and Christine all decided to have me leave the house. Mary requested an official separation known as a release, from their church in late 2022, even though Janelle and Christine believed they didn't need to divorce Cody because their marriage was never lawful. She clarified in the September 22nd episode that it was through our church when each of us four ladies married Cody. Of course, we can't all be legally married, but it was what we called a covenant. Therefore, I believe it would be best to end it, as we are not planning to get married and I don't want to be permanently bound to him, if he doesn't want me. And I'm at the point where I think we should simply put this out of our minds entirely. She went on to say that Cody was opposed to the notion, because he did not want to acknowledge the authority of the church authorities. Cody clarified his position by saying, the damage was done so badly, that we're not going to reconcile no matter what. But since we are accountable to God, I don't want to be accountable to this church and all their BS. Since it will turn into a quarrel if I become upset with Mary, I'm going to let her go and do what she wants to do. And it took her a long time to comprehend that it had been done and over for years. So I just needed her to leave. It all went bad. It all went south, Christine explained, describing how a text message argument over a 2021 holiday gift exchange grew especially ugly for the 18 Brown children. Cody and Robin and their kids were on one side and they wanted nothing to do with Janelle, me, and our kids. And following this text thread, there was a division. But it was never anything about, we don't want to see you again, we don't want anything to do with you, Robin insisted, adding that her three older children felt the exchange was emotionally unsafe and that they needed to distance themselves from the relationship. It was just about like, hey this got yucky. Gabriel, for his part, hopes they can track each other down again. In the October 13th episode, he admitted, The thing I want most is to just have a relationship with Robin's children again. My favorite person to hang out with in middle school was Aurora, and I was constantly trying to get close to Dayton in high school. However, I'm not optimistic about a relationship with Robin and Dad. When Aurora's mother married Cody in 2010, she insisted on joining the family, saying, I have been told directly multiple circumstances by multiple different people that I was not accepted, that I wasn't their sister, 
and that they didn't think or perceive me that way. Brianna, her sister, also expressed her opinion that the parents could have done a better job with, you know, connecting us as a family, and it never really happened. Christine, however, is unsure of how they may have extended their embrace. Robin's kids and Robin were invited to everything, she maintained. I would just say, just come in, come into the house anytime you want. She also mentioned that Michael T. Brown Padrone lived with Robin's children for a while, and that her daughter Isabel Brown was very close to them. There were hard times and my kids were frustrated, but they always considered Robin's kids their siblings just the same. When it's working properly, you have this amazing family unit that you're part of, a community that you're plugged into, Janelle remarked, gushing over the independence she was granted in plural marriage. You have everything you need, including a wonderful connection with your spouse. After that, I am completely independent. Therefore, plural marriage seemed like a really wonderful arrangement to me. According to Janelle, once the family moved to Arizona from Las Vegas in 2018, Cody found it more difficult to split his affections. I'm really tired, she said on the September 29th show, adding, Cody found it a lot easier to be away when he moved to Flagstaff. A couple of times I had to remind him that he needed to come to my house. She also revealed that he would try to beg off because he was fatigued. You can rest at my house just as much as you can at Robin's house, I said. The problem for Christine's children, however, was that they saw that Robin and their dad were a couple, and he wasn't in our home. Janelle described the separateness her brood felt with Robin, saying, My children were scolded if they would open up Robin's fridge. Robin added that her crew was aware of the division. Mary across the board was very accepting of my kids and I, but the rest of the family really struggled to accept my kids and I, she said in the episode on September 29th. All we wanted to do was be a part of this family. However, Gabriel would contend that he and his siblings made a concerted effort to include them. In the episode that aired on October 13th, he stated, I think that Robin definitely has a victim complex, to put it plainly. And for that, I don't necessarily hold her accountable. You know, I believe that various people come up with different ways to stay afloat. But, he continued, if she actually believes that we were mistreating her, or her children, in any way when she was constantly getting favorited by dad, and we were always working on our relationship with her kids, if she actually believes that, then there's no chance of me having a relationship with Robin ever again. In the September 29th episode, Cody talked about how his and Robin's youngest child, Ariella, who was born in January 2016, clung to his leg as he tried to depart, demonstrating how having their dad move between four different houses did have an impact on his 18 children. There's another wife who needs me, another mother, I had to tell her, and she's just dragging along on my legs screaming, don't leave me daddy, don't leave me. And I'm like golly man this is hard. Cody explained, I have other kids that need to see me. Janelle insisted, unfortunately, that's just a reality of plural marriage. From the very beginning, she continued, her children understood that their father would not be there all the time. I've always thought Robin and Cody handled her kids' problems poorly. Ari gets really depressed or something, so he couldn't be gone for longer than three or four days. I think that was a bad parenting move. The other children have done it throughout the family's history, and they are doing just fine. They are mature, well-adjusted individuals. During Cody's divorces, Michael T., a mother of three, and one of the few brown children still close to Robin and Cody, as well as Christine and Janelle, played the role of peacekeeper. Robin was close to Michael T. from the time she joined the Brown family, and she was even invited to attend the birth of her twins, Archer and Ace, in November 2022. I was trying to figure out who I was when Robin first joined the family, and she made me feel special, and she made me feel seen, Michael T. said in the episode that aired on September 29th. Robin was there for me when I needed somebody. When I needed someone to listen to me and show me love, she was there. I was so excited about having a plural family, and I was hoping that my kids would have a great relationship with other moms, Christine, her mother, said in the October 6th episode and it was everything that I hoped for when Robin came in the family, and it was obvious she and Michael T. had a great relationship. In the October 6th episodes, 
Cody discussed his estrangement from some of his older children and said, I am only guilty of not falling madly in love with their mothers. He feels that his wives are not the only ones who have taken him away from their lives. They're purposely leaving me out of their lives to punish me for a crime I did not commit, he explained. Furthermore, he added, he believes his ex-spouses share some of the responsibility. It's like well blame dad. He stated, this discrepancy in my relationship with my kids is directly in my mind because of SD talk. There's this tornado of disappointment from the family breaking up or anything. Dad made a mistake. Cody revealed that he was having trouble connecting with Hunter, Maddie, and Gabriel, and that one of his children replied to a text message saying, you are a piece of trash. Although he can take some of the blame, he finds the name calling offensive. In any case, I would never talk to you again. I've had one of my kids just say, you're an a-hole, he told cameras earlier in a different instance. I will never speak to you again. You brainwashed me and controlled me, and that's the poison he doesn't want to deal with. I'm willing to make the effort, but somebody else is going to have to be on the other end of that and make some effort too, he said, adding that he believes his grown-ups should be doing more to make things better. Robin found it extremely painful to witness Cody's alienation from his grown children. During the October 6th show, she stated, My parents divorced when I was a child. He lived with one wife in another city, and then my mom lived alone. I recall asking, What happened to my biological father? Why? It was terrible that all he did was offer a series of weak justifications for why he didn't support me when I was younger. I'm having a hard time not like, Feeling like losing respect for you a little bit, she said during their heated on-camera dispute in late 2022, indicating that she wasn't going to let Cody's hurt feelings prevent him from trying. Cody also admitted that he might be doing more to improve his relationship with his children, but he insisted that he must first heal his heart. He disclosed that he believes some of his children are colluding against me, saying, I'm so upset about what has transpired that if I speak to my children, I'm afraid they'll accuse me. I'm too impulsive at the moment. I'll only cause more harm. When Janelle and Cody's oldest son Logan married his now wife Michelle Petty in October 2022, a large portion of the family was present, but they weren't quite feeling the love. In the October 6th episode, Cody complained to Robin, you saw Madison take her kids and scuttle them away from me. He also mentioned that his daughter Josephine had not informed him that she was expecting her third child which was born in February 2023. Since they don't talk much, Maddie doesn't really tell her dad anything. Janelle clarified why her daughter avoided Cody at the wedding by saying, really, Maddie doesn't have any contact with him. She is fiercely protective of her kids. Since Evie was born, and Evie was three and a half years old, Cody has not been present. Additionally, she didn't want him to simply walk in and say, oh, I'm your grandpa, to which they would respond, what? Who is this man? In reference to Maddie's life in North Carolina, Cody stated, It's unrealistic expectation for grandparents to be in their grandchildren's lives all the time. Especially if you move your children to an entirely different coast. I have work and a life in Flagstaff. One recurring issue is Cody's insistence on some kind of mea culpa, even though it's evident that he and his adult children have quite different perspectives on their continued separation. After the COVID scare was over, and we all went back to our normal lives, we still couldn't reconcile as a family, because Cody felt like the boys needed to give an apology to him, and to Robin, especially to Robin, Janelle said of her sons in the October 13th incident. And after it sort of morphed into this, well they just need to come and talk to me, and the most precious person in this family who's given her heart and soul has been disrespected or some bull's tea like that, Janelle added summarizing Cody's problem, which was that he believed his children had not been faithful to him. And I'm like, whatever Cody. Yeah, whatever. Gabriel took a similar stand, recounting a discussion he had with his father. He kept like phrasing it like I owed him an apology, he told Janelle on the subject. Eventually I was just like, hey, unless you're like actually ready to have a relationship and fix things, then we're not going to talk anymore. He came back a couple of days later and texted me. He's like, hey, I've been like thinking about what you've been saying. I forgive you, please forgive me. I was like, forgive me for what? 
Cody only sees his youngest child, Savannah. Out of the six he and Janelle have, it's not frequently, but every couple months he'll call and they'll go out. Janelle explained in the episode that aired on October 13th. The rest of the kids don't really have much of any kind of connection with him. Savannah, who graduated from high school in 2023, feels that her four older brothers have assumed the position of a father figure. The girl has even admitted to Janelle that she hopes to have her siblings marry her. I've talked to Savannah about it, and she's like, look, I just have come to realize that this is who he is, said Janelle. He's going to be kind of that dad who shows up, and we have a lot of fun, and then he's gone. I can meet him where he's at. It's okay. But Janelle is less understanding. She bemoaned. I'm just so frustrated with Cody. Look, I've seen this happen. I have several women I've worked with over the years who divorced. And then the father just goes MIA with the kids. Gabriel took it very hard because Cody was someone who would take Gabriel with him on business trips. Janelle said early in their father-son conflict. Cody was a totally engaged father until the last few years. In the episode that aired on October 13th, Gabriel stated, I told dad that if he doesn't change and he can't take accountability, then I just won't ever see him again. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Despite this, Gabriel is still a little upset over what he did to upend his father. According to Janelle, he's at peace that his dad is not in his life. And you know, that's what I hope for all of my kids. And I think they're all getting here. Cody, for his part, seemed to be accepting of the circumstances. In a confessional, he said, I'm really sorry that Gabriel feels that way. I have reached out to him multiple times only to get rejected. But it wasn't from a lack of trying on my part. Despite being the final wife to divorce Cody, Mary formally ended their relationship in late 2022 by asking for and getting what their church refers to as a release on the basis of abandonment. On the October 13th episode, she said, I know he doesn't like that word because he doesn't feel like he abandoned me. I feel like he did. She believes that he essentially disregarded her until she decided to go so that he could say, my hands are clean. Furthermore, Cody acknowledged that he had a small plan. He said, I had moved on a long time ago during a confession. But let's just be honest here. I was afraid of what she would do if I ripped off that band-aid. It's because Mary was never loyal to me ever. That's what I've been worried about. It's just kind of reputation. Because when you get divorced, your reputation is trashed. Mary claimed that instead, it was hers that was being damaged. It's really just sad that Cody's talking about our marriage the way that he's talking about it, she stated. It feels like the narrative has changed with him. But the things that he's saying about me to other people, and the people are believing are not true thanks to an exercise suggested by their marital and family therapist in Las Vegas. Christina discovered years before she and Cody parted ways that they weren't a good fit on paper. And Cody wasn't any of the things on the list. Christine disclosed on the October 20th episode, after being asked to write down the qualities she wanted in a husband. It included being a good communicator, being present in her and her children's lives, and being attracted to her. I told him the list and he's like, I'm not any of those things for you. I said, no, you're not. She rapidly realized that her now husband David Woolley was her soulmate, in part because of the missive. She exclaimed, family is his most important thing to him, about the father of eight who was widowed. He's owned his own drywall business. He has a reputation of being honest and real with people. And he's really a great communicator.